Marcus Stroman, senior, 6.8 points per game. They lost Frank Bartley at 17.8 points per game and Bryce Washington. So they made the NIT, but they're 27 and 7. You know, they were possibly favored to make the NCAA tournament and didn't because they lost their conference championship. But, you know, this is a team to be looking at this year the Louisiana Raysian Cajuns. Very possible that they make a run. Want to dive a little deeper into ASU. Just because Bobby Hurley is such a good coach, he's really been turning this team up the last couple years when he came in. I love his recruiting. Four uh, top uh, four-star guys are Tayshawn Cherry. You know, he's number 34. They did lose a ton of production, like I said, Trey Holder, Shannon Evans, and Cody Justice. But they return Romello White, um, Mickey Mitchell, a couple other guys, and this would be a coach bet, okay? So if you're going to be on ASU, you're looking at the coach. Let's wait on them a little bit, but like I said, uh, I definitely like ASU a lot for the future. Seton Hall. Seton Hall is a fade team. They lost a lot of guys. Desi Rodriguez, Kadeem Carrington, Angel Delgado, all teams, all players scored over 13 points per game. The only big guy they return really is Miles Powell at 15 points per game. Everyone else isn't good. Uh, not a great recruiting class. The, the best guy ranks 140. This is a fade team. Uh, there's only one score really that they return, and that's Miles Powell. I, I cannot bet on Seton Hall, but I'll tell you right now, if if it looks like they're 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 favored over someone that could be an up and coming garbage team. Not garbage team, but you know, smaller conference team, definitely be looking to fade. Let's discuss Buffalo. A force in football in the Mac and a force in basketball. We all remember when Buffalo took out the Arizona Wildcats, which some people had winning it all or going to the final four. Wow, was that a good team, right? <laughs> but Buffalo just couldn't stop scoring. They're a fast-paced team, and this is a team that you want to bet the overs on. You know, they ranked last year sixth in the nation in scoring offense, first in the conference. Their scoring defense was bad, 274th in the nation. <laughs> Very bad. But I'll tell you this. You will find some totals values on betting Buffalo because I don't think that, you know, the bookmakers pay too much attention to them. We'll be looking at betting the over on these teams. They had some good returning players. They returned three starters, C.J. Massenberg, 17 points, a guard. Jeremy Harris, a guard at 15.5 points per game. And another guard, Devontae Jordan, 6.5 points per game. They, they were a very, you know, three-point area type team, swing offense. They, uh, yeah, th this team is a fast-paced team, and, uh, and, and I like their returning production. They only lost Wes Clark, and that was 15 points per game. So... I think that you know these guys are definitely going to make a run in the MAC this year. Possibly, if you can find a MAC prop, just like we did in football, to win the MAC, you're going to get some value there. They do get have a four star recruit coming into it at Jonathan Williams. So I'm liking Buffalo this year. Now it wouldn't be right if we didn't cover Sister Jean's team <laughs> or Porter Moser, the coach, right? What an amazing job. Loyola. They made the final four last year and they couldn't stop hitting. This team was amazing. And I got to tell you, it they shocked the world. And they have a lot to be proud of. And I hope that it really helped Porter Moser's recruiting. Like I said, an amazing job, but they lost some key guys. They lost Dante Ingram, and they lost Ben Richardson. I think we remember how good Ben Richardson was in the uh, 
in the finals, well, in in the NCAA tournament, you know, the kid was a a stud, and uh, I think that's a big loss. You know, there's a couple other guys that they return though, and so, you know, if you are a Ramblers fan, you you have a little bit to hang your hat on with that. They return Clayton Custer. Actually, he was one of their leading stores, Mar- Marquis Towns and uh, Cameron Crutwig. So not as, not like jumping the fade this team or anything, but, you know, it, just because of what they did last year, they're 300 to one to win it all. They probably should be a thousand to one or more. OK, sorry. That's just a sucker bet right now. But uh, them and Buffalo, both 300 to one, you know, to win it all. And I missed Arizona State there at, I think, 100 to 1, 125 to 1. So, yeah, not enough value quite there for me. The last one I want to cover is Ball State a little bit. Uh, Ball State had a couple transfers last year from the SEC. And, you know, I think that, I I think this team is ready to make a run this year. So KJ Walton, he's the six, three Missouri transfer. He's going to be a huge player this year, I think. And, you know, they return some decent production. So, uh, got to be on ball state. When you look at it, they only lost Sean sellers who only scored eight points a game from last year. Taylor persons, 15 points per game. Teague, 12 points a game. Trey Moses, 11.3 points per game. Kyler Mollers, 9.6 points per game. Like I said, a ton. They also got Brock and Hazen, a transfer from Arkansas. Okay. Yeah, this team is probably got a lot of value. You know, a lot of value. And um, this is another sneaky one. That wouldn't be the worst idea to bet. They are at 5,000 to one to win it all. Okay. I mean, would it be a big problem if you put a little bit of beer money on that or less? 5,000 to one. So, you know, Ball State's another team that you got to, that wouldn't be a bad idea to key on. So, um, you know, at 5,001, if they just make the tournament, it'd be great, but don't make it so you need to, uh, you know, you, you need to feel like they're going to make a big run or anything because they're not. But just making the tournament, you have that 5,001 ticket, you can start making money and hedging on day one. Put a very low bet down to make it easy to hedge and start hedging day one. But I'll tell you this by the time you get to the final four, when you start hedging day one, uh, it's going to get very expensive. You'll probably be, you know, you'll probably be up to 50 units or something. You know? uh, so like I said, an eighth of a unit or something very small, you want to start with a, a team like this. All right. And that, let's move into the Big Ten preview. All right. So with this Big Ten preview, we are going to go what I think is worst to first. And I'm sorry, Wildcat fans, but we're starting with Northwestern, in my opinion, that's at the bottom. Now, this is not going to go by the general power rankings. I'm just going to give you a public power ranking on every single one. Um, But uh, there's certain reasons why, you know, I I do my analysis and have them differently lined up and according to what I think in my rankings. So um, Northwestern, they're number 56 on team rankings, but this team they do not return a lot. Chris Chris Collins has a lot of work to do. You know, they lost Bryant McIntosh, which was their best player last year, and Scotty Lindsay, which was probably their second best player. Okay. Some uh some of their best guards out there. They did get Ryan Taylor in as a grad transfer, but I don't think that's gonna be enough. Anthony Gaines is gonna be filling in uh, probably for starting point guard. They return Victor Law and Derek Purden uh, at center. So, you know, like I said, they lose a ton of production and 
The good news is they have a super easy schedule, okay? Their toughest non-conference is like Oklahoma and DePaul, right? So so it's not going to look like they're terrible until they hit the Big Ten. And so um, this is a team I'm not necessarily going to be able to fade a ton, um, maybe a little bit, but, it, you know, they're, they're not playing any big teams. So that could make them overrated coming into the Big Ten Conference. They were 15 and 17 last year, uh, didn't really make any postseason. Against the spread, they were very bad. They were 11 and 18 against the spread. So not loving them. And uh, we'll, we'll just have to, you know, see if, what kind of value we can find. Rutgers. They are listed, according to Team Rankings Power Rating, at 141 as the worst in the Big Ten. But I don't think they're the worst. You know, Steve Pakil's got his work cut out too, but they returned Issa Tame for their point guard, and then they have four new players, Geo Baker, Montez Mathis, Shaquille Dorson, and Eugene Amarui. And I got to tell you, you know, Eugene was there last year, but uh, they re- they recruited pretty well. You know, they actually rank 50th in recruiting and for Rutgers that's pretty high you know and uh I think you know this could be a team for next year to be on but uh you know the fact they recruited a bunch of four-star guys you got to be happy about that you know uh and I think that you know if if they turn out and that, that that coin flip works and the guys turn out uh they could be very good they have a tough well they have a medium schedule uh, St. John's, Miami, Seton Hall, not too bad. You know, medium easy, I would call, you know, because I'm not high in Seton Hall. So um, their key losses were Deshaun Freeman and Corey Sanders. And uh, Corey Sanders was their leading scorer last year. So um, I think Montez Mathis is their uh, going to be their beast. He's a four-star recruit this year. And uh, obviously, uh, uh, Geo Baker is pretty good as well. So uh, this team was 14-12 and 12 against the spread last year. Uh, so, you know, medium and uh, 15 and 19 overall. Illinois is next, ranking number 12 in the Big Ten. So they're they're ranked number 90 in the power ratings, team rankings. And uh, they only have one returning starter. So Brad Underwood's got his work cut out. Trent Frazier is a returning starter. Um, and uh, otherwise, at point guard, they got Io, Io Dosumo. And he's a good recruit. Um, he was a, uh, I think he was one of the top recruits out there. Uh, well, sorry, not top, but uh, he's uh, he, he's probably a four-star recruit, I believe. Trent Frazier is their returning scorer. And uh, Tavion Jones actually is a top 90 recruit that's going to be in as well. So, you know, decent recruiting, not great. They have a very hard schedule. They play Gonzaga, Notre Dame, Missouri, Georgia. <laughs> yeah, they got a, they got a tough schedule, uh, non conference. So uh, you know we'll see how this team develops. Leron Black and Michael Fink is who they lost last year. They're about three hundred to one to win it all. No value there for me. Like I said, a super young team. They're very small this year too. They don't have anybody big, so they better be a pretty good shooting team this year so I think this is a team that you might want to fade early and then maybe be on late so um you know like I said we're we're gonna kind of wait on this team and uh see where that see where that uh see where that ends up next we have Penn State man they got snubbed last year they are the NIT winners right but, you know, they just lost a lot of production. Pat Chambers, amazing job. Absolutely amazing. And uh, you, you got to give them a lot of credit. They do return three starters, Josh Reeves, Lamar Stevens, and Mike Watkins. I love Mike Watkins at center. He was kind of banged up in and out last year. But, um, you know, they did lose uh, Tony Carr and Shep Garner. They... Their special players are Lamar Stevens and Mike Watkins, like I said. They got a good recruit in Marion Jones. But it was his best year. Pat Chambers' best year. They lost the, the amount of production they lost. 